Hey everybody, welcome. Today I'm gonna to be messing with my new gimbal. I got a DJI OM4 and I'm gonna be recording these reviews for you today all throughout my house to kind of mess with this active track right here. I'm just moving it around. It's following me all over the place. So yeah, welcome to these videos for middle grade graphic novels. I'm the comics teacher. All right, so I have active track on, on my gimbal right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm gonna tell you the first book that you should have on your shelf for your middle grade graphic novels shelves. Now, uh, I know that was a little redundant because I'm walking and talking and I'm not generally used to that. And you probably hear my furnace in the background, but that's okay. So I'm gonna grab this book here. The first one I think you should have on your graphic novel middle school grade classroom shelf is actually a collection in itself. And I'm gonna try to put it right up here in the corner as I normally do as I talk. But it is, ladies and gentlemen, Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson. Why should you have a collection of comic strips in your classroom? Well, I think the answer is pretty obvious. Comic strips do a wonderful job of teaching the comics medium in small bite-sized pieces, right? So you can actually do a lesson on a series of comic strips that go from maybe three to five panels and some of those in that book actually span an entire page so why not find a collection of comic strips that you enjoy that you can use to teach your students about the joy of comics in the classroom and in life and the great thing about calvin and hobbes too is that if you pick up any of those collections they are from like the simplest sort of fart humor all the way up to like existential ideas. So if you're not into Calvin and Hobbes yourself, you should be, because that is one of the greatest comic strips of all time. And in my findings, one of the things that I'm finding as well is that my students love comic strips. Like they still love Garfield, they still love Peanuts, they still wanna talk about those. So why not bring some of those in your classroom? So there you go. First middle grade book of the day, a collection of Calvin and Hobbes. The second book I'm going to talk to you about is Cody by Jared Cullum, which is popping up here over Thor right now. Cody is a wonderful story about this girl who develops this little girl who develops this friendship with the bear. And over the course of time, during a visit, they become friends and then she has to go back home and this bear and this girl are just miserable without each other. So what do they do is they do everything in their power to get their friendship back together. So this is a beautiful story of friendship and filling holes in your, in your life with, with friends and love and it is a wonderful tale. It never gets too depressing. The watercolors in this book, it is a book done completely in watercolor art are just beautiful. I gave this book to my sister-in-law who read it with my niece and nephew, and the whole family just loved it. So this is one for your middle grade classroom. This is one to have at home. It's just a feel good, wonderful book. And in these days, sometimes we need books like that. So that's book number two for your middle grade classroom today. And that is Cody by Jared Cullum. The third book that I'm gonna talk to you about today is an Iron Circus Comics by Melanie Gilman, and that book is As the Crow Flies. As I have it here, The Crow Flies, I'll put that up right here as well. As the Crow Flies is, you know what? I don't normally just read off the back of the book, but the paragraph on the back of this book is like so well written that I'm gonna read this to you to tell you what this book is about, and then I'll give you my two cents on it, all right? It says, Charlie Lamonte is a 13 year old queer black and is is 13 year old years old queer black and questioning what once was a firm belief in God. So naturally, she's spending a week of her summer vacation stuck in an all white Christian youth backpacking camp. As the journey wears on and the rhetoric wears thin, she can't help but poke holes in the pious obliviousness of the storied sanctuary with little regard for people like herself or her fellow camper Sydney. Yeah, this book is deep. There's lots. Uh, I will say this right now, though, that like Melanie Gilman, she takes her time with the storytelling here. It's about 270 pages. The book doesn't have a definitive ending either. So the ending is kind of ambiguous in a way, but it is wonderfully told. And we're going to get a very fresh modern day perspective on a lot of social issues in this book. I, I think it's it's very, very well done. Um, nothing in this book would keep it out of your middle grade classroom. I mean, we do have a character that is questioning, you know, 
white supremacy in a lot of ways and, and white privilege. I would say more white privilege more than white supremacy. Yeah, for sure, white privilege in, in, in a world where, you know, she's feeling out of place. Um, it's, it's beautiful, really well done. There's lots of discussions to be had. Discussions, I think, need to be had in classrooms. However, you know, you need to make those judgments on yourself. So that's why I would recommend this As the Crow Flies by Melanie Gilman as your third middle grade classroom graphic novel this session. Book number four is Maddie Kettle and the Adventure of Thimblewitch by Eric Orchard. This book is from Top Shelf Publishers. And I, you know what, this is one I've just had on my shelf and I picked it up. I've heard good things about it. And I tell you what, I really enjoyed it. Now it does kind of end on a cliffhanger. And I know there's a second book, but I'm not quite sure if it picks up for where this one leaves off. So just know that you may have some students who are like, wait, where's the rest of the second half of this story? What, what's going on here? What's happening here? So I will say the thing I liked the most about this Maddie Kettle book is the art. And if you read reviews of this book, you're going to see that most people are just give glowing reviews about this art in, in this book. The, the line work, the ink work is just fantastic. If I can, I'm going to show you, I know I should be like putting in pages here, but you know what? I'm just going to show you this cloud. This is like one of my favorite, one of my favorite pictures right here. And look at, look at the detail in that cloud, right? It is just so great. And this book is just filled with those panels. Yeah, there's a lot going on in these. I don't know, let's see if this is numbered. It is, it's about 90 pages long and there's a lot of characters and maybe we do want a little bit more characterization, but the story is unique and the art is so good and it's so safe for that middle school classroom that I think this could be a winner on your middle grade classroom shelf. So that is book number four, Maddie Kettle, The Adventure of Thimblewitch by Eric Orchard from Top Shelf Publishers. And I've read this one in paperback edition, but I also have it on my iPad Pro. And if you haven't read comics on an iPad Pro, it is pretty awesome. Just tapping the thing and, and kind of seeing the panels kind of come up. I, I know that's not working very well here, but you can read it panel by panel or you can read it page by page. Um, this book is called Superman Smashes the Clan, and it is from DC Comics. I'll put it up right here. And it is by Jean Luen Yang is the writer and the art is done by Guri Huru. I dig this book so much, all right? Set in 1946, Metropolis, what happens is this book actually is, this graphic novel is created off of a 16-part radio drama that was done in the 1940s about Superman taking down parts of the Ku Klux Klan. And it's as awesome as it sounds, right? Absolutely it is. So the basic premise of the story is this Chinese family moves to Metropolis for uh, the dad gets a job there, the Lee family, they move in and they start seeing all sorts of uh, racist acts and, and thoughts and words against them. And they are basically the, the target of the clan in this, not just them. I mean, there's other people in the story that are targets of the Ku Klux Klan, but they are the primary, um, you know, protagonist of the story, them and Superman. The cool thing about this book also, a couple other cool things. Number one, Superman is coming to terms that he himself is an alien and different and not of America and not of the earth. So he is dealing with being also the other in this story. And in the back of the book, there is an amazing essay written by Gene Yang about the history of this story of Superman smashing the Klan and this radio drama. But he also goes into some serious history of minorities in America and what what life was like for some Americans um, for decades. It's, it's about, I would say about six to seven pages of back matter. That is this essay that he wrote, but it is just fantastic. This one should definitely be on your middle grade classroom shelf. It, it teaches wonderful lessons. The essay is, is teaching things that, I mean, I'm, I'm reading, I'm 43, I'm reading it and I'm learning a ton of stuff that I was never taught in school, right? So it's going to teach tons and tons of different things. The art's really fun. 
I honestly thought the juxtaposition of this fun art with this serious subject matter wouldn't work, but it completely does work. So there you go. Superman Smashes the Clan from DC Comics is your final book of the day. Before I get out of here, I just want to say I'm excited over the next two weeks because I have thematic weeks coming up. Next week is all middle grade sports graphic novels. You probably have students in your class that are asking for sports graphic novels. I'm going to be bringing you five. And then next week after that, I'm going to be doing five wonderful middle grade graphic novels novel titles from Random House Graphic Novels. Random House Graphics has been putting out some ridiculous books over the past couple years and I'm going to be reviewing five of those. So that's the next couple weeks. Remember to subscribe and like this video, subscribe to my channel and I'm creating a playlist with all of these middle grade graphic novel reviews. So if you're just finding this, if you're just finding my channel, finding this video, then just check the playlist and you will be able to watch all the middle grade graphic novel reviews. Remember, I am doing 10 weeks, five books a week for 50 middle grade graphic novels, and this is just five of those. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.